what's the motherfucking deal, Sauce Nation, man? It's your boy, Ed Hunter. If you don't know, hi, I'm your Houston homie, your Houston homeboy, a.k.a. Senior Saucy, and this is Sauce Sports. If you're not familiar with Sauce Sports, Sauce Sports is a Houston, Texas homer name. We're going to be talking all sports, but only Houston. Uh, but if you want outside of Texas, make sure you go to SauceSports.tv. Put that in your browser, your, whatever, your Firefox, your... Now, if you used to use an Internet Explorer, you tripping. Uh, and it'll take you to the other channel. you find the link in the description. Um, we're going to talk some Texas, man. We're going to talk a little bit about clowning. Um, something that we've been saying around here for a long time. Shout out to the Roundtable. Shout out to Sauce Nation. I know y'all want them rocking videos. I got caught up last night. Family affair. I love my Sauce Nation family. But, hey, you know, family first. But make sure you slide over to SauceSports.tv. That's what we'll be doing. Rockets Talk. And I will give y'all the pregame for the rest of the playoffs. I'm, I'm going to be on that. Um, but a little quick Texas news. Something that we've been telling y'all here around the sauce for quite some time, right? Like, I mean, probably months now. Ever since the franchise tag got placed on it. And people saying you're crazy. You got other people saying, oh, he's going to sign Texas pay all their players. Yeah, I'm saying shots for them. But my thing is, look. I need I need the doppelganger here in Houston. You know how I'm supposed to, you know, run around and say that's my cousin, that's my nephew, that's you know all that good shit. I need look. I'm trying to get that clowny clout, right? <laughs> but let's look at this article, man. Let's let's talk about some things and uh, let's, let's have some discussions about something that we really don't talk about around here that we should. And I know originally I was a guy saying that I before all this I didn't think Clowney was a hundred million dollar guy because I thought the Texans would come to an agreement, maybe throw some money, guarantee some shit, and make some shit shake. But obviously. That is not the case. They allowed other teams to set the market. They let players like Flowers and, and Lawrence, and we already know about Donald and Mack and everything with that. Um, that's not really even the same conversation. You let lesser tier guys, lesser tier overall guys, come and dictate the market. So if you want Klein, you're going to have to pay for him. And let's, let's just look at this article real quick. We're going to skim through it. I'm not going to read the whole thing. I want to know your thoughts, man. Hit the comments below if you agree, you disagree. And uh, just let me know how you're feeling. We'll be live back live tomorrow or whenever you're watching this. Live at 7 p.m. every motherfucking night. To tonight that I'm filming this because I was delayed today. But anyway, uh, let's get into the article, man. And, and let's talk about Clowney and his future as a Houston Texan. And let's talk about the Texans, man. Some of y'all going to like it. Some of y'all not going to like it, but fuck it. Right, so NFL rumors. Davion Clowney, Texans, not close on contract extension. He's going to get paid. He's going to be here, you know. Hey, I'm trying to tell y'all. Texans are cheap. The man wants his money. They don't want to pay him. Anyway, let's talk about the Houston Texans edge rusher Davion Clowney. You know, Houston, Texas, and the edge rusher to Davion Clowney, my nephew, my cousin, my, my people. <laughs> don't believe that shit. Y'all don't be running around telling people that shit's true. Um, they're far apart on long-term contract even per Aaron Wilson of the Houston Chronicle. So what some of y'all gonna say, Clowney's not worth it anyway, just like Honey Badger ain't worth it, just like them. And some of y'all gonna say the Texans pay all their players. But we're gonna get further down into this and, and we'll talk more about it, you know. It's, it's funny how whenever the Texans don't want to pay them, all of a sudden they're not worth it. But when they're here, everybody loves them. That's... Y'all got to stop letting this, this team dictate your thought process. The Texas Place franchise tag on Clowney will amass 21 quarterback hits and 9 sacks last season. Five-year veteran has not signed his tender. Clowney will not take part in the team's off-season conditioning program, which is, you know, general. It that happens. Uh, unexpected, but isn't an unexpected battle regarding standard procedure. Exactly. If you ain't signed, you're not going to put yourself out there to get hurt. I mean, that's just how it is. Uh... They have until July 15th to sign their tag players to long-term deals if the deadline passes without contract. Then uh, the tag player must take the field on his one-year tender. Um, Clowney can hypothetically hold out, which would be expensive, a little under nine and a half million, or nine and a half, nine and a half, nine hundred and fifty thousand dollars. A little under that. Let's just generalize. But it'd be nine hundred thirty-seven thousand two hundred thirty-five dollars. That's easy to say. This is my English all fucked up today, right? Uh, Texas problems that were claiming Clowney won't be cheap. Over to Cap founder Jason Fitzgerald uh, contributed a PFF article. Y'all know how we feel about PFF over here. <laughs> but some of y'all regard it as the gospel. So stay tuned, right? Anyway, uh, predicting the top 10 most expensive free agents of the 2019 offseason, Clowney was number one with a six year, $135 million deal, $85 million guarantee. Fitzgerald wrote the following. Clowney has basically every soft factor going for him when it comes to earning a big salary as a free agent, uh, as a former number one draft pick. Puts him in a class by himself. You can argue stats and production versus the uh, rest of the edge rusher. His draft rate likely means that there's a strong support on 32 teams, that he's the best player available by a wide margin. Only downside is that he'll be franchise tag, which always limits the market for a player. Texas have ample cap room to carry a one-year deal. Uh, with a big cap number, won't be any rush to negotiate that contract. Still at the end of the cycle, he should be one of the highest paid rushers in the NFL unless he decides to quickly sign a contract before the other players have an opportunity to set the market. Well, 
late for that. Uh, still playing, it could be worth it. PFF ranked him as the number two among edge rushers in defense, in, in run defense, and noted he steadily improved over the past few seasons. So we talked about the Texans, right? But let's talk about the Texans last year. They were terrible in giving up the pass, right? Terrible. But we love to brag and boast on, well, they're, they were they had such a good run defense. They were great on the stop and the run. Who's the best run stopper on the fucking Texans? Think about it. Just think about it for two seconds. Don't even take You already answered I mean, the man we talked about. But yet, he's not worth it. He's not this. But y'all want to brag, Texans fans, on how great the Texans run defense was last year. Who's the best run stopper on that team? Hands down, it's not even close. Uh, it's not JJ. So, you know, it, it's cool, it's fine and dandy, but let's 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 be legitimate. We always want to talk about, well, Duke could replace him. How's Duke going to replace him? Duke's not going to replace his run stopper. Maybe if they're using Duke legitimately as an outside rusher, and still they're not going to move him around. They're not going to freelance him like Clowney. So his numbers may look good as a pure outside rusher, but it's not the same. And so that's what you got to look at. You got to look at the nuances in this game, and then that's what people aren't doing, especially a lot of these Texans fans. They see numbers or just take the money or fuck that. Nobody's telling. Look, look we're gonna get into that anyway. There's also helps that Clowney is happy in Houston. Wants to be here for. Uh, Want to be here for the rest of my career. Kirk Wilson, of course, I want to come back. I promise Texas, whoever else watching, I'm going to be a much better improved player next season. I haven't been thinking about a contract. If I come back and play like I know I'm going to, the contract will take care of itself. I'm going to work on my craft, work on my game. That's what I'm worried about. Um, you know, and it says, uh, it says with Deshaun Watson, the Andre Hopkins combination, uh, stout defense that ranked number one against the run per football outsiders. Clowney played a large part in that run defense success in addition to his pass rushing prowess. So it would behoove. Shout out to Wink. It would behoove Houston to sign to a long-term deal. Uh, this question, the question is, when will that take place? So, what y'all are not getting is, the Texans were terrible against the pass. They have not done anything to improve their status right now. The draft is coming up, and we'll see what happens. Still, we know how they treat rookies. We know who they have coaching these rookies and what to expect from them, and we, we have so many other needs. Why not solidify something that you know is a guarantee, which is Clowney will stop the run? Now, if you put him in the right position, he can also be a legitimate passing threat, uh, a, legitimate, a legitimate threat against the pass. Another pass threat, he ain't going to play quarterback. But, you know, he's, he's freelance and he's doing this and he's doing that, and they're putting him all over the place. So there's not the consistency that is needed when it comes to a guy like Clowney being in just one position. I would let Clowney line up against whomever and, and let them attempt to stop him all day. All that moving around shit, get over that, let's look, go for, to a 4-3, you know, Put Merciless and, and, and Clowney on the edges. Let them do what it do. And go from there. But we got to do this complicated, this this nuance, this, you know, outdated, whatever the fuck we're doing. Um, and y'all already know my feelings about Cornell, and I was happy about him coming back last year, but that that, too, that turned out to be the wrong decision. Look, I just want to see my team win. I'm going to be critical. I'm going to be upset until I see some moves get made. Y'all can talk about paying too much. Y'all can talk about whatever y'all want to talk about. But let's be realistic. Clowney is a dominant force on defense. There's nothing you can say that denies that. All you can do is talk about sack numbers. But told that with TFLs and everything else, let's talk about it. You know, and that's a decent number of quarterback hits. Shit. Imagine him going somewhere else in the AFC South and having to see Deshaun with that. That, that would definitely not be the lick. But... We'll see what the Texans going to do, man. I feel like they're going to be cheap. I feel like we're going to end up losing Clowney and not really getting anything back for it. But we'll see what happens ultimately. Hopefully, you know, they can work something out. But apparently, like they say, Aaron Wilson, the Houston Chronicle, saying they're not close. The Bleach Report article is reiterating that. And this is something that we've been saying for quite some time, you know, regardless of what other hopeful, optimistic, overly zealous, joyous, whatever people may be saying without any merit, without any proof. I mean, look, if, if Clowney was happy, he would have signed a tag. If he, if, you know, and didn't try to work out a deal or whatever else. Clowney wants a long-term long -term deal, and the Texans ain't talking the shit that he wants to hear. And I ain't mad at him. This game ain't guaranteed for nothing. Get you some guaranteed money, solidify your status as a player. Uh, look, I love my team, and I'm, it, it is the Texans is why I became a fan, not because of Clowney. But, hey, there's just certain guys that you know that you need to keep happy, you know, instead of trying to treat everything like a fucking business. Sometimes you got you to gotta work a deal. You know what I mean? So it is what it is. Man, look, like I said, we'll be live back tomorrow at 7 a. I appreciate you if you watch it this far. You know, leave a like, thumbs up, comment, all that good shit. Um, I'll leave the link to this fucking article in the comment section so you can check it out for yourself. Uh, with that being said, hey, man, it's your boy Ed Honcho. Thank you for watching. Uh, y'all stay saucy and uh, go Texans, go Rockets. Rockets gonna win it all. I don't care what y'all say. They're gonna beat the fucking Golden State in the second round. They're gonna sweep the fucking Jazz and whoever won any smoke after that is gonna be easy money. But anyway, 
go Astros. They kicking everybody. Like, y'all see the Astros too? That they number one. Like, why do they ever want to get an Astro in the now? All of a number one, right? Yeah, we think they're gonna win them and the Dodgers. Fuck the Dodgers. They'll beat the Dodgers. Yeah, fuck that. Anyway, with that being said, hey Jack, look, <laughs> I'm out, man. I'm talking shit. Hey, SaltSports.tv if you want that other t- uh, other Houston sports talk. And make sure you follow and sign up for the uh, podcast. I promise all that shit coming. I'm just it, it's coming. Just stay tuned. I'm out. I'm gone. I'm out. I'm done. For real. I'm done. Get the fuck out of here. Why you? St- Come on, man. Stay soft. I'm out.